Hello and welcome to another episode of the GCSE Maths Question of the Week with me, Mr Barton, where every single week I try my very best, and I do try hard, to find you a beautiful question that has been written exclusively for my Diagnostic Questions website to help prepare you as best as possible for the demands of this new GCSE Maths exam. And in recent weeks, we've looked at a lot of new topics to the GCSE and the dangers of those. But this week, we're going to focus on an old classic, a topic that comes up time and time again. But as I've mentioned before, there's a danger with that, right? The danger is you think, I'll focus all my attention on the new stuff, you neglect the old classics, and then they come to bite you in the bum. And that has happened with this question because students are getting it wrong left, right, and center, and it's not that hard. So let's take a look at it. So it's been written by AQA, and it simply says, circle the smallest number. Now make sure you read that properly. Um, and we've got 80,000, and then things start to take a nosedive. 8.276 times 10 to the 3. So your first question is, what topic are we dealing with here? Well, hopefully, as soon as we see things times 10 to the 3, we know that we're in the realms of a bit of standard form. Nice. Now, you have two ways you can approach this question. And this advice I'm going to give you now is good for standard form, but it's also good for when you've got to convert units or when you've got fractions, decimals, and all that kind of stuff. Whenever you've got to compare things that are written in two different forms, get them all into one form. Get everything in the same form. It's much easier to compare. Okay, so I have two options. I can either write everything as a normal number, a non-standard form number, or I can write everything in standard form. Um, I'm going to go for the long way around. So I think it's going to allow me to address a few issues. And that's to write everything um, as a normal number. So starts off nice and easy because A is already a normal number. 80,000. Nice. If only we could stop there. B. Now B isn't quite so nice. So B is 8.276 times 10 to the 3. Now I like to, this is my way of doing it by the way. I like to think of that as meaning times by 10 times by 10 times by 10. Some people like to think of the decimal point moving. I don't mind, but this is just how I think of it. So I'm going to make it 10 times bigger. So I'm going to get 82. 10 times bigger, 827. 10 times bigger, 8,276. As I say, if you're a fan of moving the decimal point, 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times. Done. Get the same answer. Okay. Uh, what about C? C is a bit of 7.892 times 10 to the 4. Okay. So I'm going to make it 10 times bigger, then another 10, then another 10, then another 10. If you want to move your decimal points, go for it. So I'll start with 7. So it's going to be 78, 789, 7,892, and then another 10. So 78,000. 920. If you want to move your decimal point, it's fine. You've just got to be a little bit careful. 10, 100, 1,000, and then one extra bit. So you've got to remember to fill in your zero. Okay. And then finally, we've got a bit of D going on here. So we've got 8.9 times 10 to the power of 3. So I'm going to times by 10, by 10, and by 10 again. So times by 10, I'm going to get 89. Times by 10 again, 890. By 10 again, 8,900. And again, just for completeness, we go one, two, three, fill in your zeros, and again, you get 8,900. So the question on everybody's lips is, what's the answer to the question? Circle the smallest number. We've got 80,000 there, 8,276. I think that's the smallest, isn't it? 8,276. I'm going to go for B as the smallest answer. But we're only having half the fun here because the question was, um, well, sorry, the extra bit of the question I like to ask is why, why have some of these wrong answers been chosen? So why might somebody go for A above all the others as the smallest answer? Well, firstly, maybe they misread the question and see it as the biggest number. I've seen that too, too many times to, to uh, mention here. Or maybe they don't fully understand standard form and they just look and see all these zeros and think, well, the A is the one with the most zeros. So maybe it's the smallest number. Or it's the one that's got the fewest non-zeros, like it's got an eight and the rest is zero, so maybe it's the smallest number. Few mistakes could come in for A, okay? What about C? C's an interesting one. Why might you pick C for the smallest? 
Well, I reckon you pick C because this number here, 7.892, that's smaller than all the other start numbers. Smaller than 8.276, smaller than 8.9. So if you're just looking at this start number, you're going to pick it. But of course, we all know this 4 is going to be important as well. And finally, what about 8.9 times 10 to the 3? Why might you choose that? Well, I reckon you choose that because you think this 8.9 is quite small. There's only two digits involved in this 8.9. Whereas if you compare it to 8.276, there's three digits. So maybe people think, oh, 8.9, only two digits, so that's smaller. But of course, if you know about your place value, that nine there is going to be bigger than that two there. Okay. And you know what I like to do to end? I like to say, okay, let's treat ourselves now to an extra question that some students might pick. Well, this is cheating a little bit because it's not really standard form, but the other, re the other way people go wrong when they're working with standard form is when negative powers are involved. So I might be tempted, just for a laugh, to write something like this, uh, 782,500, oh, hello, times by 10 to the minus two. And the reason, and of course, that's not standard form. It's not written in proper standard form because it should start 7.8 and so on. But as soon as you put that minus in there, it really gets people thinking. Because do they think the whole answer's minus? Does it go bigger? Does it go smaller? Does it just go negative? Which way's the decimal point going? Blah, blah, blah. So chucking something like that in for me would make this a, a much more challenging question. Okay, so there's standard form. Um, it's a regular topic, so it's one of those that you've really got to revise. So my advice, firstly, will be to try the rest of this quiz out on diagnostic questions. Check you're happy with that. It'll isolate your areas of strength and weakness. And then if you need any extra help, then hop on uh, Mr. Barton Maths, uh, go to the topic page, and you will find videos, worksheets, all that kind of stuff. Okay, and I'll see you for a fresh question of the week next week. Take care. Bye for now.